Well, how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is doing fine. I hope God has been looking over you and blessing you in the name of Jesus. I hope all is good. I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to Jesus Christ. I want to thank him for this Holy Spirit that now dwells in us. That, him, that living spirit that we have now inside of us. I hope you had a blessed week. Oh, God, continue to look over you. Continue to look over you. I got a lesson that I want to bring you today. It's going to be titled, <clears throat> The Two Atoms. It's going to be titled, The Two Atoms. And I'm going to be coming from the Christian perspective. First, I want you to know the first atom is the atom that came from the ground. What God created from the ground, and he became a living soul. Then I want you to know I'm talking about the second atom, and the second atom is Jesus Christ, a living spirit that now dwells in us. I want you to, and, and I hope this message touch you and bless you always. So first I'm going to start off in Romans 5. I'm going to start off in Romans 5, so go with me to Romans 5. Romans 5, let's go to verse 12 first. Romans 5, verse 12. <clears throat> and it says, Wherefore, as by one man, <clears throat> sin enter into the world, and death by sin. And so death pass upon all men, for that all have sin. So understand this. Now we're talking about the first Sabbath. So we're talking about the first seven. Wherefore, as by one man, we're talking about that first seven. Sin entered into the world by death. It, it, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And death by sin. So sin brought forth death. Sin brought forth death. So sin leads to death. You understand? It was disobedience to God. And it's brought forth death. And so death passed upon all men. So therefore, death passed upon all people. So you understand, death came to us because of what Adam did. And it was disobedience to God. Death came upon us. So death came upon us. Hmm. For that all have sinned. And recognize this, that all have sinned. So when you're born in your fleshly world, when you're born into this world, I want you to understand and I need you to understand that you are born in sin. You are born with a sinful nature. You are born with an unrighteous nature. You are a sinner. You are a sinner. We have to recognize that we are a sinner before we can really turn our life over to God. We have to, we have to understand that we are imperfect and we do not reach God's standards and that we have been separated from God with a, with a personal relationship. See, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, they had a personal relationship with God. And God's want to reestablish that personal relationship that we have with him. He want to reconcile us back to him. But because of sin, we are separated. So that death is a spiritual death that kills us from God, which also led to a natural death that's going to take place, all because of sin. So you're a sinner. For, uh, for until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not charged or credited when there is no law. So you couldn't be charged with sin in Adam and Eve's time. But once the law came, but when the law came, then you can be charged with sin. And then that's when sin really became an effect. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So we was all dead from Adam to Moses. We was all separated from God from Adam to Moses. And when you died, it was that was it. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? You understand? So we go back and Adam transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? So we're talking about. Adam transgressed, but he was a figure of him to come. Who's that figure that he's talking about to come? 
Who is that he talking about? He's talking about Jesus coming. He's talking about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But now, as the office, so also, but not as the office, so also is the free gift. For if through the office of many be dead, much more the grace of God in the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto us, has abounded unto many. So by grace are you saved through faith. And that comes through Jesus Christ. That's the only way that you can be saved is by Jesus Christ through grace. So I read this to you again to give you a better understanding. For, 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 but not as the offense or the wrong or the am or the stumbling as also by, by, by one man he stumbled, he messed up. So also is the free gift, but he's talking about now we got a free gift coming. For if through the offense of, of one, many be dead because of what Adam did, we all became dead. Much more the grace of God. Now we're talking about because of the grace of God and the gift, and the gift that comes by grace, which is by one man. And that grace only comes by one man, and it's a gift from God. Jesus Christ has abounded unto many, have increased unto many. And not as it was by one that sin, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. See, Adam came, and what Adam did, it condemned us. It separated us from God. It killed us. See, that's what Adam did. But thank God for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came, and he's the grace of God, and he's the gifts of God that give us life. That give us life. And we can be justified with God now. Now you are justified with God. Now you can be in right standing with God. Now you can have a relationship with God because of Jesus. Now we can live in righteousness because of Jesus. This is what Jesus brought us when we was dead. You understand? He brought us life. When we were separated from God, he made it so that we can get back with God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. That's the second Adam. That's Jesus. The first Adam killed us. The second Adam brought us to life. The second Adam brought us to life. The second Adam came to give us life. So you understand that. And then it goes on to say, for by one man all pins, death freeing by one. So because of one man all pins, we was under death. Death was in charge. But thank God we ain't under death no more. Death was in charge. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign like so serene in life by one Jesus Christ. But because of the abundance of grace, because of God's grace, and of the gift of righteousness and the gift of righteousness, that was the gift. Jesus was the perfect gift for righteousness. And the gift of righteousness should reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Should rule in our life by one by Jesus Christ because of the grace of God. You understand? You got to understand. You got the grace of God in you through Jesus Christ. With Adam, we got damnation. We got condemned, but with Jesus, we got light, and we got it more abundantly. We got the grace of God. We got the goodness of God. We got the kindness of God. We got the mercy of God. We got God grace all in us because of Jesus. You understand? I'm talking about that second matter. It's Jesus that makes the difference. It's that grace that's in Jesus that's give us the right standing with God. It's that grace. That's in Jesus. Let's give us a personal relationship with God. It's that grace in Jesus that give us the living spirit living inside us. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you. It's Jesus. Oh, Shadakapaka. You are not doomed now because of the second Adam. Because of the second Adam, you have life and you have it more abundantly in the name of Jesus. Do you understand where I'm coming from? You're not dead anymore. You are alive to God in Christ. But when you was in sin and you was doomed, you was in death, you were separated from God. But thank God, Jesus came and broke the barrier. Thank God, Jesus came 
and broke the bread. Now, by grace are you saved through faith and been delivered. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So I told you, you was condemned. By Adam, condemnation came unto us. We was condemned. We was worthless. We was no good. The judgment came upon all men of condemnation. We was messed up, guilty. We was doomed. We was doomed because of what Adam did. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men. By the righteousness of one, who? I check the back up. And I'm talking about Jesus. Because of the righteousness of Jesus. Because of the obedience of Jesus. See, Adam was disobedient, you understand. But Jesus was obedient. You understand, and because of that, we have the free gift. So by the righteousness of one, we have the free gift came upon all men. We get the free gift. That's God's case. We get the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life, unto justification of life, until being approved, until having a right life in Christ Jesus. I'm justified now. It's been approved. We straight now. God accept us, you understand, because we are in Christ and we're not in ourselves. We don't live by the flesh, but we live by the Spirit of God. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life that came through Jesus Christ. That's the only way that you can get the Spirit of life. Do you believe in Jesus? Is Jesus the Lord and Master of your life? Is Jesus your Savior and your deliverance? See, are you living in the Spirit? Is the Spirit making some changes in your life? Because if you got the Spirit of life living in you, that means that's the Spirit of life that's in you. That means it can bring life to your body. Bless that wonderful name. You don't have to be around here lying, cheating, stealing, conniving, or whatever it may be that goes against God anymore. Because you got the spirit of life now. And the spirit of life is going to lead you into the righteousness. The spirit of life is going to help you live in God's standard. The spirit of life is going to help you overcome evil. The spirit of life is going to help you hate evil. The spirit of life is going to help you love your neighbor as you love yourself. The spirit of life is going to help you love God while God loves you because God is love. The spirit of life is going to make it so you don't fear God because perfect love casts out all fear because you're in a personal relationship with God. See, the spirit of life made it so that you can have a relationship with God. But that spirit of life, you have to understand, came from the second Adam, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I will go and I will send you a comforter. And then it goes down there and tell you the comforter is the Holy Ghost. It's to help you. Well, you understand? And it would teach you all about me. See, when you got the spirit of life in you, you got Jesus in you. And if you got the spirit of life in you, you're going to know who Jesus is by the spirit that's in you. You got to understand that you are not dead. You are alive now in Christ Jesus. You are alive now in Christ Jesus. The spirit of life. Then go on. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. By one man, see, look at here. By Adam's sin, we became sinners. Because of Adam's sin, we became sinners. Because Adam didn't trust God, because Adam didn't obey God, oh, we became sinners. We became sinners. We became defiled. We became messed up. We became separated from God. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. We became sinners. But I'm telling you today, you don't have to be a sinner no more. You should have by now found someone to live your life out. And that person that you should live your life for is Jesus Christ. That person you should live your life for is God. That person you should live your life for is the Holy Spirit that now 
live in you. That living spirit. Let that living spirit that's roaring in you come to life. Let that living spirit kill off your flesh. And let that living spirit help you get into the righteousness of God and to God's standard. Let that living spirit help you to praise God in all that you do. Let that living spirit help you to sing a song unto God. Let that living spirit help you to take your request to God. Let that living spirit help you to thank God. Bless your wonderful name, Jesus. Because of the second we can do that now. In that second Adam, you got to understand, I got to say it again. That second Adam is Jesus Christ. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. That second Adam is Jesus Christ. Then it goes on, so then it goes, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So by the, so by the obedience of one, Many will be made righteous. Do you want to be made righteous? You can be righteous. Or, I, or some of you, I can tell you right now, you are righteous by the obedience of Jesus Christ. You are righteous. See, I need to read that to you one more time. I need to read that to you one more time. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. By who obedience? By Jesus' obedience. Because of Jesus' obedience, it ain't got nothing to do with your obedience. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody's obedience. It got to do with Jesus' obedience. Because of Jesus' obedience, you are righteous. You are righteous. Because of Jesus' obedience, do you get it? So do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the obedience of Jesus Christ? Do you have your faith in Christ Jesus? That's the first obedience step you got to take. Putting your faith in Christ Jesus. Turning your life and your will over to Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. Because when you receive Jesus, bless that wonderful name, when you receive the obedience of Jesus, you become righteous. You are righteous with God. God see you as righteous. You understand? And not only are you righteous with God, not only do God see you as righteous, guess what? You start living in God's righteousness. Understand what I said. I didn't say man righteousness. I didn't say woman righteousness. I didn't say mama righteousness. I said God's righteousness. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Now, through Jesus Christ, because of this obedience, you can be righteous. You can be righteous. Be righteous in Jesus. Be righteous in Jesus. But by the disobedience of one, you became sinner. Because of Adam's disobedience, we became sinner. But God looked out for us. And he had his son go through this trial. And he proved his obedience. And because of him, now we can be righteous. We can be righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might increase or abound. But where sin increased, grace did much more increase. So let's understand. It said the behaviors and the actors and the characters of sin may have increased. But the grace of God increased that much more because God said, I'm going to deliver you from your sins through my son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to save you. For God said, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. See what I'm saying? For the wages, bless that wonderful name. When you want to get you know you get your paycheck, but for your wages, so your payment for sin is death. So when you live in sin, you're gonna die. That's your payment. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, bless that wonderful name, is eternal life. See now, you get a payment that's called eternal life. Wouldn't you like to have eternal life today? Be eternally saved, eternally with the Father in heaven. Oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. That as sin has reigned unto death, now sin has ruled unto death, even so might grace reign through the righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. That as sin has ruled or led to death or lead to death, it will control you and take you straight to death. Even so, my grace lead and take you through, through righteousness unto eternal life. See, 
Let me read that again. Even so, my grace, my grace ring through righteousness. See, we need God's grace. We got to live in God's kindness. We got to live in God's mercy. We got to live in God's love. We got to live in God's instruction. All these things is God's grace. And these right here, grace, grace through righteousness. And then it will lead us into righteousness. Then we'll start living in God's righteousness through his son, Jesus Christ. And because now that we live in righteousness, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. And now that we live into righteousness, we're going to go into, whoa, eternal life. But if you're living in sin, you're going to go into eternal death. But bless that wonderful name that we are in Christ Jesus. Thank God for that, that you are in Christ Jesus, read through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You said by Jesus Christ our Lord. So the only way that you can get into the righteousness of God is by Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. See what I'm saying? Adam, when he did that, he broke our relationship with God. He did all of that. He was very destructive to us. But now I'm not going to do all this reading. But I'm going to go through here and I'm going to jump down to 1 Corinthians 15, 45 through 50. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, 45 through 50. Bless that name, Jesus. Forty-five through fifty. No, it's right above that. And so it is written: the first Adam was made to made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickened spirit. Let's go to the first part of this verse. And so it is written: the first Adam was made a living soul. He was a living soul, a physical body. That's all he was, a living soul. Do you understand? That's where. We use the term human being. That living soul ain't nothing but a human being. It ain't nothing but the flesh that got a spirit in him that gives him life to breathe air and move around the earth. So that's all as far as it went. He was a living soul. He was a human being. The last Adam, I'm talking about Jesus now, was made a quickened spirit. He was made a quickened spirit. The quickened spirit is a living spirit. It's the spirit of life. He was made a quickened spirit. So you got to understand when, when Mary got pregnant, God sent the spirit. And Mary got pregnated by a spirit. She got pregnated by a spirit. You understand? <laughs> she, he, he wasn't created from the dirt. So he had two natures in him. He had that flesh nature and he had that holy nature. And I'm talking about Jesus. He had both natures in him. And you know what? Jesus had to defeat that. Uh, Jesus had to defeat that flesh nature. And thank God, and thank God that he did. Jesus defeated that flesh nature. Jesus defeated that flesh nature. Jesus did not sin. Jesus did not disobey God. Because Jesus is that living spirit. Is that living spirit. I need you to understand that you got that living spirit inside of you. You got that living spirit inside of you. And let you let that living spirit lie. And if you let that living spirit that live inside of you, it will kill your deeds of your flesh. And the spirit of God will take over. You will mortify the deeds of your flesh by the spirit that now lives in you. You can call it the Holy Spirit. You can call it the, the spirit with the capital S. You can call it the Holy Ghost. You can call it the living spirit. I'm calling it today. I'm calling it the living spirit because that spirit gives you life. Dead in sin is you dead. But now you need to kill off sin so that Holy Spirit come in there and live in you, that living spirit, and it destroys sin. Bless that wonderful name. And now you are a living spirit in a flesh body, just like Jesus. You got the living spirit living inside of you. You got the living spirit living inside of you. However, or or how be it, that was not first with your spiritual. But that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. Now we're talking about 
Now we're talking about Adams. He said, hi, Adam. That was not first, which it, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. He said, look here, Adam was not spiritual. Adam was natural, made from the ground of earth. All he had blown into him was the breath of life, <laughs> not the spiritual life, not the wisdom of God, not the knowledge of God. He just had the bread of life. I mean, he just had his, the life, the spirit of life blown into him. That's why he was just a living soul. He was a nothing but a natural human being that went against God. That went against God. That went against God. In other words, that which is spirit, spiritual. But Jesus came from the spirit of God. God sent his spirit into Mary to bring forth a child and, and to be impregnated to bring forth a child who would be the savior of the world who would be the deliverance of the world, who would reconcile the people back to God, he, who, who will destroy sin in your physical body through the spirit because he's spiritual. And I'm talking about Jesus. And I'm talking about Jesus. Without that lamb sacrifice, that blood sacrifice, Jesus did on the cross, you got to believe in that. And Jesus said, if you believe in me, he said, I'm going to send you a comforter the Holy Ghost, to dwell in you. And it will teach you all about me and it will help you. It will teach you. I'm talking about that living spirit. You understand? I'm talking about that living spirit that's inside of you right now through Jesus Christ. The living spirit. The first Adam is of the earth and earthly. See, there you go. Strictly fresh. The second Adam is the Lord from heaven. The Lord from heaven, Jesus, the Lord from heaven, came in the spirit. He came in the spirit. The Lord from heaven, the master from heaven, the teacher from heaven. You understand? So that's who Jesus is. As is, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. So also, as is human, such are they also that are human. See, earthly mean human. They're human. And, and as is heavenly, which is spiritually, such are they also that are spiritually. Let me read that again. Spiritually. And as we have borne the image of the human, which is earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, which is spiritual. Which is spiritual. So we've been blessed by God. We've been blessed by Jesus Christ. I want you to know, the second Adam, it's the way to have a personal relationship with God. The second Adam is the way to get saved. But well, who is the second Adam? The second Adam is Jesus Christ. The second Adam is Jesus Christ and he's spiritual. The second Adam. Let me read this little note I read right here. The first Adam was made from the earth who became a living soul. The last Adam became a living spirit, a spirit that gives life. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, who was birthed by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, better known as the Spirit of Life, Jesus brought us blessings. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. <laughs> Look at it. He didn't bring us condemnation, you understand? Jesus brought us blessings. Jesus delivered us from the curse. Jesus delivered us from the curse of life. Jesus delivered us from the curse of sin. Jesus delivered us from the curse of sin. Jesus gave us life. Jesus gave us life. Jesus restored or reestablished our relationship with God. Jesus gave us a good heart, a good mind, and good desire. Jesus was and is totally obedient to God. Jesus believed and trusted God. Jesus believed in the truth not the deception of the devil. Jesus believed in the truth, not the deception of the devil. The reason I say that, because you know what? The Satan tried to deceive Jesus too. But Jesus didn't go for it. First Adam did. Jesus is our salvation. 
Jesus is our salvation. So if you don't know Jesus Christ today and you're an unbeliever and you're willing to become a believer, I said now it's time for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior in your heart and in your mind. It's time for you to trust in him and put your faith in him. Ask him into your heart, whichever way you do it, let you can recognize that he's present with you. But I want you to know it's only going to work by true faith. It's not, it's not going to work by vain faith. When you come to Jesus, you want to make him the savior of your life, then you got to come with true faith. You got to come with true faith. And he will deliver you. And he will set you free in the name of Jesus. And you will be set free. And you will be a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away, all things that has become new. Well, that's the message for today. I hope it touched you. I hope it bless you. I hope it benefits you. And feel free to share it with your friends. As you know, I'm on YouTube. Feel free to go there and subscribe to me. That'll be a blessing. I'm on Twitter too. But be sure to share this to the people because there's some brothers and sisters out there that need to hear this message. So let's work together and let's pass this word of God's around to help everybody in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Hope to be with you next week.